The big shots at the Space and Rocket Center are getting ready to celebrate one of America's greatest well, January is going to be a busy month at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. NASA is preparing to celebrate 50 years in space. On January 31st, 1958, NASA's first satellite roared into orbit. NASA is preparing to celebrate 50 years in space. A lot of people try to tell the story of NASA without telling the story of, of the Army, and that's a grave mistake. The Army was the foundation for NASA here in, uh, in Huntsville. And uh, you just can't tell one story without telling the other. Uh, that's the beginning of the story. This is the big picture, an official television report of the United States Army. Today's big picture will reveal the dramatic, suspenseful story of how the Army, when the prestige of the United States throughout the world had been shaken by events beyond its control, stirred the hearts and emotions of the American people with an epic display of scientific and technical teamwork. Well, it looks like the Russians are very well aware of the capabilities of rockets. I believe they are working hard at it, and uh, I still hope that we'll be first up there, of course, but I think we have no time to lose. During that time in October 1957, when Sputnik was launched, there happened to be a meeting in Huntsville between uh, the Huntsville people, the Secretary of Defense designate, McElroy. They had a cocktail evening. While we were sitting together, joking and having a good time, all of a sudden our public affairs officer, Gordon Harris, came into the room with his arms up and he said, the Russians have launched a satellite. That was, of course, like a bomb shell exploding in the middle. At first nobody could say anything. And then von Braun, he said to Mac Elroy, who was sitting next to him, Mr. Secretary, if I had been given the word, we could have done that a year ago. What the Sputnik signal means, we still don't know. The Russians haven't said anything about that. Do you admire the Russians for doing it or not? No, definitely not. I said we should have been the first ones to have it, if there's such thing. It's my opinion. I guess the American people are alarmed that a foreign country, especially an enemy country, can do this. And it, we fear this. But I'm convinced that the Russian concept, that's as demonstrated by Sputnik number two carrying this animal, the uh, consider the control of space around the Earth very much like, uh, shall we say, the great maritime powers consider the control of the seas in the 16th to the 18th century. And uh, they say, if we want to control this planet, we have to control the space around it. A sudden meeting has been called by General John B. Medeiros, commanding general of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. Good morning, gentlemen. Be seated, please. I have a very important announcement for you. We've been assigned the mission of launching a scientific Earth satellite. And we will use the Jupiter-C configuration as a carrier that we developed along with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I promised the Secretary of the Army that we would be ready in 90 days or less. Let's go, Werner. And so at the moment we're waiting, waiting for the missile to leave the ground, and the next shot will be the Vanguard going aloft uh, it is hoped to carry the first U.S. satellite into orbit in outer space. Well, this, of course, raised in my mind the wisdom of the Stuart decision that, uh, to go with the Vanguard uh, launch system as compared to the Army system, which I'm already pretty well familiar with both of them. And I was, of course, uh, very uh, s skeptical about the early success of the Vanguard system because of its uh, complexity and the fact it was a very new system. Right now, we need a 10 to 12 year program 
that has as its ultimate goal the man domination of space. And if we don't, we're going to be in trouble. It was not until Friday, January 31st, that the weather cleared sufficiently for General Medaris to order launch at 10.30 p.m. The missile is in flight, but the success of its mission is still in doubt. It will take another hour and a half to know whether the satellite is in orbit. Hello, Lynn. You can send this off to the secretary. That our satellite is definitely on orbit. Now get that off and then I'll give you the figures in a few minutes. Okay, boy. We were told that there would be a press conference over at the National Academy of Sciences. And uh, the three of us then were taken over in a car. I remember sitting in the back seat of that car, the three of us wondering who was going to be around because it's a rainy night in January and there isn't, nobody's on the street. And here we are <laughs> driving to a press conference about two in the morning. A packed auditorium of reporters, radio and TV interviewers heard the announcement of Dr. Richard Porter, chairman of the IGY committee. A scientific Earth satellite was placed in orbit at five seconds after 10.55 p.m. Just one more came the inevitable plea from the photographer. And exhausted as they were, the trio obliged with what was to be the page one spread in newspapers all over the world. And wherever the news went, it had an effect of transcendent importance. The scientific and technical prestige of the United States was enhanced. People everywhere knew the free world would not be left behind in the all-important race toward outer space. Now, Americans could once again look up toward their future with faith and with confidence. Friends, there was dancing here in the streets of Huntsville when our first satellite orbited the Earth. I'd like to ask you, don't hang up your dancing slippers.